Free. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Let's make this a year of action. That's what most Americans want. Raising the debt ceiling does not increase our debt. Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. The debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. And if people can't trust not only the executive branch, but also don't trust Congress and don't trust federal judges, then we're going to have some problems. What difference at this point does it make? Everything is awesome. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 8th, 2014. I guess uh, everything is awesome, or maybe not. <laughs> We're going to find out. There's a lot of breaking news. Alex is going to be joining us in the second hour. We're going to talk about the overwhelming of the borders. Is this something that is just incompetence, or is it a takedown of America by design? We believe the latter is the case. When you look at the soaring unemployment numbers, and of course, they like to play games with the unemployment figures, constantly reviving them every quarter, redefining what unemployment means. But when you look at the core numbers, when you look at how many people are working as a percentage of the population, that tells the story accurately. And so we're going to look at what's happening with that. And of course, there's a lot of news and drudge and elsewhere about the massive dumping of children into the U.S. from Central and South America. They're being told, go to the United States. They will not refuse you. I remember when they opened up Hong Kong Disney World and they were so overwhelmed by people trying to get their children into to Disney World that parents, Chinese parents, were going to Disney World even after it was completely full and closed. They weren't taking any more tickets. They would lift their children over the gates and drop them into Disney World. Well, folks, America is no Disney World. If you're thinking about doing this for your children's benefit, we're going to talk about what is being exposed as far as ongoing information about child trafficking, human trafficking, the dangers of transporting these children. What's going to happen when they come to the United States and they're by themselves without any parents? Well, of course, Obama is going to be their parent. The United States government is going to be their parent. They are going to be raised from a very early age, seeing the government as their benefactors, having no idea about the foundations of liberty that we have all enjoyed and basically essentially becoming wards of the state and devotees of the state. They're going to balkanize America with people who have no connection to uh, an earlier culture, have no understanding of individual liberty and how human nature is always working against that, trying to consolidate power. That was the legacy that our founders gave us. When we were in Copenhagen talking to some of the demonstrators there, several of them said, you know, we envy you for having the kind of people founding your country, like Jefferson and others who wrote about individual liberty, who wrote about what is necessary for a, a government to be controlled so that it doesn't control the people. And I said, well, of course, they've gotten around that. And they said, yeah, but the fact that you have that foundation, that legitimate foundation, that's a philosophical foundation, it's a legal foundation, all the rest of this stuff that's built on that foundation is just simply works of straw put on sand. When people understand the basis of that foundation, that can be swept away. So, of course, the government, all governments since the time of Plato, have wanted to get children at a very early age and raise them away from the family to become the dominant influence in their life. I believe that's what's really behind this open-door policy on immigration, trying to get these anchor children. Of course, we've had anchor babies in the past. Now they have anchor children. But having these children come in and, and be wards of the state... Uh, it's not just something that's going to implode the economy. And Alex is going to talk about how it is part of a long-term globalist plan. They're not going to have jobs, neither are we. The sector of service, the service sector of the uh, economy, is going to be replaced by robots. They're already doing that. First, they took the manufacturing base, they sent it to China. Next, they're taking the, manufact the service base that's left here in the United States. That's going to be replaced with robots. So what are these people going to do? Well... 
They're going to use one group against the other as they take us down economically, as we can see that they have already taken down Central American com companies. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with news, and we'll take your calls also in the second hour. Get your response to what Alex has to say. So stay with us. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security on sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. Well, so does he. Live from the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Sunday, June 8th, 2014. I'm going to be joined by Alex in a special report about what's really going on with this overwhelming immigration. Of course, there's a lot of information in the news about people just bringing their children to the United States. They say, take them to the United States. They will not be refused. They think that their children are going to be educated here. They think they're going to be safe here. They need to think again, as I just mentioned in the first segment. I've seen this before in Hong Kong where... When Disneyland opened up in Hong Kong, people just took their children to Disneyland. If they couldn't get in, they just dropped them over the gate. That's not going to work in the United States. We've got information about child pedophile rings that's breaking in Virginia, as well as the overall plan of the globalists and how they're going to not only replace American workers, but they're going to replace any service workers with robots. This is uh, something that they've planned for a long time. Alex is going to break that down for us. But first, I want to go into the uh, story that just broke this last Friday after our show. Paul Joseph Watson had a report. The economist, uh, an economist says that U.S. banks are preparing to charge customers for deposits. Now, this was earlier in the week. We told you that the European Central Bank was going to start doing negative interest rates for the banks there, of course. Uh, in other words, charging them for money that they had on deposit. And now, of course, if they're going to do that to the banks, you know that the banks are going to push that along plus uh, add additional fees to that for their own customers. It's just a matter of time. But Paul, in the article, quoted a couple of economists here in the United States that point out that, of course, it's inevitable that's going to come to the United States as well. question is when and in what form. In the article, he says banks in the EU have not indicated whether or not the costs will be passed on to consumers. But the New York Times' Neil Irwin says it's inevitable. He says they're going to pass on these negative interest rates to consumers or at least try to. They may do so probably not by explicitly charging them interest rates. In other words, they're not going to put an item. They're not going to say that they're going to give you a negative interest rate. That would just annoy people, of course. They're going to be much more subtle about it. They're going to add new fees or they're going to increase the amount of account maintenance fees. That's always been the case in the past. Uh, just look at how your bank fees have escalated. We ought to do an article about that. We ought to go in and look at the escalating charges for every service that the banks provide. But then he also quotes another economist, Martin Armstrong. And he points out in the article that Armstrong called the 1987 economic crash to the very day. And he says that banks are preparing for a raft of new account fees. He said in the U.S., we're more than likely... Not, more likely than not, we're going to get negative interest rates directly passed on to consumers by the banks who will now claim that it's the feds that are making them do it because the feds will raise it on the banks and then they'll say, we've got to pass those rates along to you. So you want to get your money out? 
You want to get your money out of the bank and put it in a mattress? Uh, well, guess again, because we got another article up. Secret European cash limits are in place. Again, starting in Europe, uh, they love to start these things in Europe. That's where the consolidation with the European Union started. That's where they started the euro. They used the collapse of the euro to take out elected representatives in places like Italy and Greece and replace them with Goldman Sachs bankers, where they called them technocrats. And so now we see that they're going to the next step. As he points out, some of you remember the recent scandal where HSBC tried to impose cash withdrawal limits on their accounts. And this person, uh, Mark Kempton from the uh, BBC, says it turns out that was just a trial balloon to see if the public would object to it. These limits are already in place, and they're going to limit your cash withdrawals. They're going to say, you can't take your money out. you got to keep it in there, and we're going to, of course, charge you higher fees on that. That's the way this thing is going to go down. This has been something that, and, and again, we're going to go to uh, the immigration system. But before I do that, I also want to point out that this last week, of course, was the one-year anniversary of the Snowden leaks. We have an article up on InfoWars Today from Washington's blog. An NSA whistleblower says that Snowden never had access to the juiciest documents. Now, this isn't just any NSA whistleblower. This was the first of the NSA whistleblowers. We've talked to William Benny here at InfoWars, and of course, he was the technical head with global responsibilities, a global technical head of the NSA. We talked to him about their capabilities. He's very concerned. For a while, he was saying, we're this close to a police state, holding his two fingers very close like a pinch. But now, a few months ago, he said, we are in a police state. He said for years, and he worked for the NSA for over 30 years, he said he'd monitored during his career East Germany, as well as Russia, he knows what a police state looks like. He knows when they're monitoring their own system, their own citizens, to the extent that they are in this system, what that brings about. And he said, that's what we're doing here. We've had several NSA whistleblowers prior to Snowden that were very, very concerned when they saw the surveillance turn inward. Now, in this article that's up on InfoWars, what Tice was saying was one of the very first things that people would be told when they started to work for the NSA was the number one rule is that because of FISA, you do not ever spy on American citizens. That's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. You had to get special court permissions from a secretive court, the FISA court. That, of course, was created in response to the revelations that came out of the Frank Church Committee hearings in the 1970s, talking about CIA abuses. People were very concerned about the CIA and other intelligence organizations turning on the American people and creating a police state domestically. These organizations that were created to protect us from foreign enemies. Remember what Madison said. He said, if tyranny ever comes to America, it will come tyranny and oppression. It will come in the guise of fighting a foreign enemy. That is what the NSA is doing. We've talked about that in conjunction with the asymmetric warfare groups and their training for takeover American cities. We've talked about the militarization of the police and using the military as police. Well, that is especially true of these NSA type documents. That is where we're going. Now, this is a, an article that, uh, where Tice is talking about uh, what Snowden did not have access to. And he quite frankly says that he believes that uh, the NSA is spying on and blackmailing top government officials and military officers, including Supreme Court justices, highly ranked generals, Colin Powell, other State Department personnel, and many other top officials. And of course, we've said, I've said many times, I firmly believe that when you look at the bizarre decision that uh, Justice uh, Roberts came out with, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, writing both the dissenting and agreeing opinion enabling Obamacare. That dramatic 180-degree turnaround and writing both sides of the opinion, first disagreeing with it and then all of a sudden agreeing with it, I believe, and many other people have also believed, that he was blackmailed. This is a fellow, Robert Tice, was the very first of the NSA whistleblowers. He was even before William Binney and Thomas Drake and others who came after him. And when he came out, he was part of a group. Now, he was not a, a technical head as uh, William Binney was in terms of looking at the programs. But what he was concerned about was still domestic espionage. He was concerned about the fact that there was a separate, higher 
group within the NSA that had access to documents that the rest of the NSA did not have. And he says in this article, it is very compartmentalized. Even with the stuff they had, you might have something at the NSA where there's literally only 40 people that know that it's going.